Okay, let's go into practice solving quadratic equations. And we're going to practice by solving this problem here. Now, I'm calling this a quadratic equation. Why is this a quadratic equation? Okay, if you know the answer to that question, go ahead and put that into the comment section. Better yet, if you know how to solve this, go ahead and put your solution to uh, this equation into the comment section as well. But let me go ahead and answer the question here real quick. This is a quadratic equation because of this right here. We're dealing with what we call a second degree polynomial. So this is a polynomial and its highest power is two. So the power, okay, or the exponent to a polynomial we call a degree. So this is a second degree polynomial equation, i.e. a quadratic equation. And uh, these are very, very important, especially for those of you that are at the Algebra 1 level, certainly the Algebra 2 level and beyond. You absolutely need to know how to solve quadratic equations. I'm actually going to show you the correct uh, answer to this problem in just one second. And then I'm going to go through this thing step by step so you know exactly how to solve this type of quadratic equations. And by the way, this is a big topic. So uh, even if you get this particular problem right, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're uh, an expert at solving all quadratic equations. So we'll talk a little bit more about the quadratic equations and other things that you need to know in just one second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. Maybe you failed math before in the past, or maybe struggled with math. Maybe you're having a tough time with math right now. Listen, I'm telling you right now, don't give up. There is absolute hope for you to do, not just pass your course, but you to do very, very well. Now, here's uh, the three things real quick that you need to be successful in math. One, you gotta be willing to work hard, okay? Uh, math at any level requires effort. So if you're not willing to uh, put in the work, well, you're gonna have a tough time uh, learning and passing. The second thing you need is encouragement, and this is really important for those of you that are struggling in math. You need someone telling you that you can actually do this stuff, so it's worth, um, in other words, it's worth um, while for you to put in the effort, okay? If you're looking at math, you're like, oh, why even you know try because I'm going to fail? I'm telling you, you need to try because you absolutely can uh, learn mathematics. But here is the third thing that you need. You need great math instruction. You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. Now, math is a very technical subject, and I could teach quadratic equations in a very technical way, but guess what? That's not going to help anyone out. What I, The way I like to teach math is I like to explain it in an easy-to-understand way so all people can get what's going on and I don't water down the material, okay? That's, you know, comes from years and years of teaching experience to be able to teach that way. So if you need help with your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for, that involves math, things like the SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher's certification exam, the GED, et cetera, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes at best. If you want great math grades, you gotta take uh, great math notes. I can tell you right now from experience, those students that get grades like A's and A pluses in math almost always have like outstanding notes. So improve your notes and things will get much, much better. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So we're dealing with a quadratic equation. So I told you what a quadratic equation uh, is by definition, right? It's a second degree polynomial equation, but here's the deal, okay? Quadratic equations are something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? Sounds kind of uh, very technical or you know, very like in the detailed and in-depth, but basically the fundamental theorem of algebra says the following, whatever the degree of your polynomial is, and this one is a uh, second degree polynomial, this is how many solutions your equation is going to have. So 
Uh, by definition, a quadratic equation is a second-degree polynomial, so it's going to have two solutions. Never forget that. Okay, so when you solve a quadratic equation, you need to have two answers, two unique solutions. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. All right, so x is equal to plus or minus uh, 2 square root of 5. Now, some of you might be saying, well, hey, you said there was two answers. Well, let's just go ahead and be very, very precise so you understand that this right here is two solutions. So one solution, we can call that x sub 1, is 2, positive 2 times the square root of 5. And the second solution is negative 2 times the square root of 5. And you can see here, basically, this is the same thing. This is positive. This is negative. So we just use this little notation right here to kind of make this, um, you know, a simpler way to write the solutions. But these are our two unique solutions. Now, if you happen to have gotten x is equal to the square root of 20, well, that's pretty good. Okay. However, you probably are going to get points taken off by your math teacher, okay? Your math teacher might maybe give you, let's say, an 8 out of 10 on your exam. And you might kind of be like this. What are you talking about, Mr. Math Teacher? I got this thing right. Well, no. Listen, anytime you're dealing with square roots, etc., you got to fully simplify them. That's not really an optional thing. So keep that in mind as well. But anyways, if you got this problem 100% correct and you gave me these solutions well let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face an a plus a 100 percent and a few stars so you can tell your friends and families how awesome you are with quadratic equations okay so um again we're talking about second degree polynomial equations quadratic equations this is a big topic if you already are kind of overwhelmed, you're like, oh, man, I'm having trouble with this. Let me give you some suggestions. I'm going to direct you towards my Algebra 1 course in my Math Help program. Okay, I will teach you everything you need to know about quadratic equations. And there is a lot. There's a lot of different methods. There's a lot of uh, different subtopics. So, um, you know, this is something that you don't want to ignore as quadratic equations are crucial in terms of algebra one, algebra two, et cetera. Okay, you gotta understand them. But let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. So here it is, we got one half times x squared minus eight plus one is equal to seven. So what should be our first move? Well, right here we have some parentheses, okay? We have this number outside of these parentheses. So anytime you can apply the distributor property, you wanna go ahead and do that. So we can take this one half and multiply it by that x squared. So that's going to be 1 half x squared. And then this 1 half times that 8, 1 half times 8. Hopefully you see that that is 4. Okay, so we're applying this, uh, this, uh, the distributive property right here, right here to simplify this part of the equation. So now I can kind of better see the terms. I have 1 half x squared minus 4 plus 1. And then right here, my next move is I can combine like terms, i.e. combine these numbers. So this is negative 4 plus 1. And negative 4 plus 1, of course, is negative 3. So now we have 1 half x squared plus negative 3 is equal to 10. So what do I need to do now? Well, easy. Let's just go ahead and add a 3 to both sides of the equation. Now, I'm not showing all the steps here because hopefully uh, most of you out there see what I'm doing. Uh, but when you're doing this work for your teacher, homework, uh, on the exam, you want to show all your steps. And you can kind of, you know, at the Algebra 1 level, you could write this like right here. You don't have to show uh, you adding both sides of the equation by 3 at this level of math. I would suggest to you it's not necessarily critical, but you do have to show what you're doing. You have to show that you went from here to here. Okay, That's what you, you know, you can kind of see, oh, okay, uh, someone's adding both sides of the equation by 3. So it's kind of up to you, but this is at the minimum level of work. But if you really truly want to be precise, you would want to show that you're adding both sides of the equation by 3 like so. And then this would be the result, right? 1 half x plus nothing is going to be 1 half x. I'm sorry, 1 half x squared plus nothing is 1 half x squared. And then negative 3 plus 3 is 0 and on this side. So we don't need to write 0. Then 7 plus 3 is 10. Okay, now this stuff right here, this is just basically um, solving like, it's the same steps that you learn when you're solving one step, two step, basic linear equations. So if you don't really you know, understand what's going on here, you need to do a lot of review. 
All right, let's go ahead and continue on here. I have 1 half x squared is equal to 10. You could see the next step is going to be x squared is equal to 20. Okay, but here you could show that uh, the best thing here to do, you could divide both sides of the equation by 1 half, but basically when you have a fraction in front of a coefficient or in front of a variable term like this x squared, just multiply each side of the equation by the reciprocal. In this case, it's going to be the reciprocal 1 half is uh, 2 over 1. Just flip this upside down so that it'd be 2 over 1 or 2. So this would be 2 over 1 or 2 on this side. So when I multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, 2 times 1 half or 2 over 1 times 1 half is just going to be 1 x squared or x squared. And then 2 over 1 or 2 times 10 is, of course, 20. Okay, so how do we solve x squared is equal to 20? Easy. Now we just go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So a lot of you probably got, you know, may have given this as your answer. Now, if you did get this as your answer, let me go ahead and not be so mean to you and give you a nice little happy face, and I'll give you an A minus. Okay, that's pretty good, right? You did very good, but you're not done, okay? This is um, not like an optional thing. A lot of uh, students think, well, how come, you know, I have to simplify this? Well, it's just part of what you need to do in algebra. But anyways, if you're able to get this problem down to this uh uh, level or this um, point, that's very good. So let's go ahead and fully simplify this square root. So we'll just go ahead and take a look at the, our answer. We know it's positive and negative square root of 20, but let's just focus in on the square root of 20. Remember, when you're simplifying square roots, you want to be looking for perfect square factors. In other words, we look at this number 20, we want to see, hey, are there any perfect squares that are factors of this number. Now, perfect square is numbers like this, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc., right? So these numbers, 4 is the same thing as what? 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared, 25 is 5 squared. You get the idea. So we want to look at this number and would say, are any of these numbers here, and of course this list goes on and on, factors of, of uh, 20? Of course, 4 is, right? You're like, oh, yeah, 4 times 5 is 20. Now, you wouldn't say that uh, here it's the square root of 20, and you're like, oh, I know factors of 20, uh, 2 times 10. And this is correct. 2 times 10, are uh, these are factors of 20, but these are not perfect squares, okay? They're not on our little list here. So this is really not going to help us out. We're looking for factors that are these numbers. So we're like, oh, yeah, 4 is a perfect square. So 4 times 5 is 20. And when you have uh, one big square root, okay, like this, we have the factors underneath it like so, we can kind of pull this one big square root. Um, uh, so we have the square root of 4 times 5, and we can kind of pull these uh, numbers apart like this. The square root of 4 times the square root of 5, this is a property of square roots. And the advantage of doing that is now I could take the square root of this perfect square factor. The square root of 4 is what? That's going to be positive negative 2. So now this is going to be 2 times the square root of 5. And, of course, we want to indicate that plus and minus uh, because we are dealing with roots here. We need to show that there are two solutions. So this is not a trivial little detail. This is something that you definitely need to do. Uh, when you are solving quadratic equations is make sure if you're dealing with any radical, or any uh, square root, that you have it fully simplified. Okay, so again, uh, this is a huge important topic in algebra. You absolutely need to know how to solve quadratic equations. So if you're at this level, again, check out my Algebra 1 course. I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well that can help you out with this stuff. But here's what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't just be like, uh, yeah, it's not that important. Maybe I'll, uh, I won't see it again. Well, I'm telling you right now, you absolutely will see this again. And you have to have an attitude, especially if you're struggling with math right now, is, listen, it's better to identify what you don't know. And if you don't know all these different things in math, okay, that's just your starting point. Just start improving one skill at a time, okay? And the best way to do this, if you're lost with quadratic equations, is not to jump into the very difficult problems. Not be like, I'm going to try to do these. I don't need to do these basic ones. No, you need to kind of, you know, establish a good foundation and just start building up from there. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.